came to your chapter present of ATV Midland. And it's always my pleasure to see you guys on the third Friday of each month. Um, I can't tell you how much I love this chapter and love the members. I appreciate all of you for what you do. Because as, what, as I always tell you, the chapter exists because of you. You help us to make the chapter run. So I'm very excited this morning to be here. We're in the third quarter of the year, so I always say we're in the home stretch. Yes, yes, yes. yes I can't believe it, but it's the middle of August, but here we are. Um, and ATD Midlands, there's so much happening with the chapter. And can you tell by the number of people here today that we're bursting yeah. at the scene? Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're very excited at the growth of the chapter and the fact that we have new members. And so we are just excited at what's happening and the new initiatives that are taking place with the chapter. And we're going to fill you in on some of those this morning as we go along. Um, we have an exciting program today, so I don't want to hold you very long. But I want to go ahead and start talking about some of the events and upcoming things that are going to happen with the chapter as we go as we uh, get the record. So, how many of you have heard about our new SIG, our new special interest group? Mm -hmm. Yes, how many of you are excited about that? <laughs> yes. Is Crystal no, Wilson here? Crystal's not here. No. Crystal Wilson works at Colonial Life, and Crystal called me one evening at home, and she was like, Seth, I hate to bother you. And I was like, not a problem. She explained she was a member of ATD. My door's always open, as I told you guys. And she said, it just seems like our chapter um, programs are tailored toward our facilitators and our coaches and our consultants. Mm -hmm. She said, I feel like we're left out as instructional designers and learning technology professionals. Mm -hmm. So she said, hey, what are we going to do about that? So we talked a little bit. She was willing to spearhead this to find out how many people were interested to get an uh, interest group. And honestly, we had to shut down registration. Mm -hmm. we, yes. We had so many people signed up for this particular interest meeting today that we actually had to shut down registration. So I'm re really excited about the possibility of what this chapter can do in our area and in the state for um, instructional designers and learning technology professionals. So please join her today in this room at 1015 um, for that meeting. And this is your, you are the chapter. This is your meeting. She is our chairperson. But you guys will help facilitate um, this particular uh, special interest group. So I'm really, really, really excited about that. And I will address you guys later, right before that meeting. So we're really excited about that. Um, don't forget our conference. How many people signed up? Woohoo! Woo mm -hmm. Registrations are growing. So Friday, September the 16th, meet us at SCANA, at Washington SCANA Parkway. Um, we're excited about that. We spoke with our speakers yesterday. They're energetic, they're excited. Everybody is on board, so we're looking for a great day of learning. Don't forget to be eligible for our grand prize drawing, which is um, a weekend driving experience with one of these three great cars um, from BMW. And there's also a $200 gift card, $200 gift card that you can spend any way you can like. Can you come by my home and pick me up? I promise to leave the kids at home. <laughs> I'm a great weekend partner. <laughs> uh, for those of you uh, that have um, sent in your nominations for the WLP Award, we thank you so much. I spent all day yesterday going through the submissions for my committee, and we've had some great, great uh, submissions from some great companies that had nine nominations, mm. and they will be uh, presented at our conference on uh, September 15th. So join us. In October for Troy Simpson, he's going to talk about taking um, necessary steps to necessary endings. Um, so he'll join us on October 21st. Mark your calendar. Our very own Tamel Green. Tamel, raise your hand or stand. <laughs> Tamel is going to speak to us on social media in November, November 18th. So mark your calendar for that as well. I'm very excited. And then hey. Something that I love so much. Mm -hmm. The walk is happening on October 22nd. And I'm really excited that ATV Millen is still on board and that we're, uh, they're going to support the walk this year. This year we're at Spirit Communications Park, which is very exciting. And you all know that one in eight women are uh, affected by breast cancer. 
So it's hard to go through life and not find anybody affected by any cancer. So we want to support our women in the Midlands. Um, our monies go to um, getting machines for the different facilities. Um, Palmetto Health was very instrumental for me for those monies. I was able to get my breast fair. I was able to um, get some just prosthetics and things from the monies that were raised. So it's very exciting. We're able to help other women. So if you want to join Team SEP, <laughs> contact me and we're going to walk a race for life. I won't race, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll certainly be out there with my team and my family. I'm very excited. Um, remember that joint membership is valued in that, so if you want to be a power member, let us know. If you're only a local member, we can help you with um, becoming a power with your power and natural. There's really so many benefits to that, and there is a page on our site dedicated to talking about chapter uh, joint membership. The CPLP, Linda Caldwell, she's not here today, but Linda Caldwell is still our chair for that. If you're interested in that study group, and becoming a certified CPLP, please let us know. There's limited information, and if you can't get that right now, then see me out with another support. Um, your reward points. If you have your card today, um, your board members can sign those for you, so don't forget those that you can be eligible for grant prize at the end of the, of the year. Um, if you or your organization would like to become a sponsor, for the conference or even for a chapter member, a chapter meeting, please let us know. Um, there's great promotion and marketing for your business, building and maintaining relationships and partnerships, and then certainly community involvement and giving back. All right, follow us on social media, okay? We'll have Jamil talk about that in just a second if you could. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, and LinkedIn. So can you give us like a five second? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Follow us on Facebook, that's where we're mostly um, doing all of our social media marketing. But we are on Twitter as well. And we do need some people to help us with our social media efforts. So if you are social media staff and would like to join our marketing team, we would love to have you. Thank you, Tamel. So now what I'm really excited about is one of our newer initiatives. Um, ATD Midlands now has its very own app. Oh, yeah. Yes! <laughs> I am very excited about that. Our technology team um, that consists of Mike um, Smith from We Know IT. I used to call it We Know It. And I'm like, what is that? We, we know it. We know it. So Mike from We Know IT and Mike brought on this wonderful young man who I'm going to adopt for myself because he's so sweet. He's uh, Clay Walker. Clay's an intern for USC. He'll graduate in December. So Clay, will you join us just for a second? Okay. <laughs> and when I tell you these two men work so hard even on their, their jobs, they work like they're doing their jobs but then they're emailing us all day with the things they're doing for ATD mm. and then they're working in the evenings doing things for ATD. So. We're, we're just so excited to have them on board for our technology team and the app that we'll be able to use not only for the conference, but we'll be able to use it move, moving forward. So from the board, I just want to say to you guys, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. You guys mean so much to us, um, and you become my family, and I appreciate everything that you're doing on the technology side. So I'm going to turn it over to you guys for just about three minutes. Okay. I don't think it's that long, but uh, I'm excited to see we're busting at the seams, obviously. Yes. I'd like to think that we maybe have something to do with that a little bit. We're <laughs> obviously behind the scenes, but when Seth came to me last year, I've, I've been um, not so much an intricate part of the, the chapter for years, but I've been coming like much of you you know, do, and, and, and we've built relationships. But she came to me last year around this time, I believe, and was like, Mike, what would you think about being you know, on, the, on, the, on the board? And at first, I had my eyes set on like maybe membership. I'm more of a marketing guy, based on personality of our company, to get out to these meetings and just interact with people. Um, and then she was like, "Well, you're in IT. How about the VP of Technology?" <laughs> and I was like, "Uh, <laughs> um, okay. Well, I will try." But then, you know, my wheels started spinning. And long story short, I had a bunch of visions that I wanted to implement um, to help move our chapter forward. Uh, they were so gracious enough. Not even a um, few weeks on the board last year to send me to DC, mm -hmm. and it really opened my eyes to the uh, national event that we had there. And um, and so I, I got networked. And long story short, you know, I, I 
just I, I, I figured that, you know, well, you know, I'm a big app user myself, and um, I, we had the tangible rewards card that everybody was carrying around, and I would forget it half the time. Mm -hmm. Many of you do the same thing. I was like, this would be so great if we would structure it like Starbucks or something. You go in, beep, you know. Yeah. And, and so I, I'm having all these ideas floating in my head, but, I, you know, I, I was diving into the deep end without able to really swim yet. So I was like, man, how do I get these thoughts on paper and plant these seeds and help them grow? And then the Lord brought me clay. I met him at an after hours event. Many of you may know Tech After Five. And he came up to me and was like, hey, man, you got a job? <laughs> so he's a programmer at heart. I started spitting out all these ideas, brought him in now. And a little bit of background about him. He's over here all by his lonesome. He's from um, Georgetown. You know, USC student and uh, not even the IT major. It's the deeper level of IT. It's the it's the what do y'all call it? Is this, is this infrastructure something or integrated information technology? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> deep, deep, deep. So anyway, um, so so I brought him in. I said, look, we can intern, you know, with you. We do that a lot with USC, but we already have several interns already. They're paid. You're gonna have to do it for free. And I gave him the wink, and he was like, all right, man. He's working at Bilo at the time. And, uh, you know, making a week what we mostly spend on lunch during the week, you know. So, uh, long story short, he found, I told him about, you know, Planet of these seeds. He found the Happy Pie platform, helped me implement that. Uh, very user-friendly. It's now on iTunes. I know many of you have been waiting on that as we spoke about it. It's social. It's been on the Google Play Store. And this guy, let me tell you, his birthday was Tuesday. He's... Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. We've already had a beer, so. <laughs> but uh, he's at home celebrating with his family, uh, and, and I gave him the time off. I said, we ain't paying you. <laughs> he's emailing me on his birthday saying, hey, you know, we just got the okay from iTunes. We're on there, and he's doing all this support stuff. I'm like, man, it's your birthday. And he's like, but there is one guy in mind, and I... I don't think he cares if I call him out. Ron Harvey, where you at? <laughs> he was at the social last month, and when we spoke about having this Apple and the platforms, the two major platforms, Apple and, um, and, and uh, Google, he was like, man, I got a Microsoft phone, man. Like, Windows, like, ooh. I mean, that's not that bad. <laughs> anyway, Clay felt so bad, he was like, I'm going to put us on the Microsoft platform, too. And I'm like, well, how much does that cost? Because we already paid, like, Apple. And, 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 you know, and he was like, no more, it's free. He told me it was free. And so I get an email, because I'm the VP of technology, from Microsoft saying that Clay has spent money out of his own pocket to put us on that platform before oh, no. on his birthday. And so I said, man, i got to tell the board this. So I told the board, and we want to, in, in, in recognition of you and all your hard work, uh, for free, might I add, not just volunteers. <laughs> like, you know, Steph says all the time, your, your paying job comes first, but what if you don't have a paying job? <laughs> you know, and then you just volunteer, and you know, like, so. But uh, on behalf of the board and the chapter, we wanted to reward you for your efforts. This is a $100 uh, Amazon techie gift card. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you. say that he, although he doesn't have a full-time job, we have brought him on board as a paid intern. He's let Bilo go. All right. So, so uh, we're excited about moving forward just as our conference coming up uh, is, 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 you know, um, proud legacy, bold future. We really want to implement that as the technology team, mm -hmm. and uh, Clay has been an essential part to doing that. So please, and last, I, I asked you guys to download the app. I know it's another app to go on your phone, right? But it doesn't take a lot of um, um, memory, and, and we need to really test the um, bandwidth of the app. So, you know, go to it. It's, it's an easy download. Make sure you create a username and password. It's secure. Trust me, uh, you know, we've tested it back and forward, and it has a bunch of great things. And I'm actually going to send out an email next week to the entire group. Y'all are really the first to know. So, but then I'm going to send it out to the entire membership core in the Midlands, so and it'll have some tutorials and stuff just in case, you, you know, you can't really figure it out. But because we know there's like that one person. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> all right, thank y'all.
about H and E because there are so many gung ho people out there that are willing. Oh, I call them willing workers that are um, wanting the best for the chapter. So if if you have something in your spirit that you feel like could help the chapter, let us know. You know, come to me. Do like Crystal. Call me at home. I answer the phone. Um, call me at work. Send me an email. Um, because besides what I do um, professionally, because I love training and development, talent development, it's in my blood. Um, I, I love this chapter. So I want to do, once I'm gone, December 31st. Woo! <laughs> Somebody say, I keep coming back. No! Even the kids looking at me like, Mama, this is it. <laughs> so, but, but I want to leave that legacy, you know, keeping in with that 70 years. I want to leave that legacy that this chapter is awesome. Because really, we're, we're it for talent development in the middle. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let's keep it going. Don't let it die. And if you look around this room, you can tell right now, it, there's a lot to this chapter. There's a lot of people who are, who are supportive of this chapter. So we want to keep that going. So without further ado, I want to introduce our speaker, Ed Cerny. And Mr. Cerny is our vice president of programs here at the chapter. So we're very excited about him being here today. Before I actually do a formal introduction, I want to say that I met uh, Mr. Ed last year when he was um, <laughs> running for this position on the board. And I didn't really get to know him until we went to a conference in October in Arlington, Virginia. So I come downstairs one night and I decided I'm going to go to the restaurant and get something to eat. And who's sitting alone with Mr. Ed? So we strike up a conversation because he says, I go to a different table. He says, why does someone eat alone? So, <laughs> so he joins me and my friend, and we have this really in-depth intellectual conversation um, with Mr. Ed, and I have been smitten with him ever since. He's very contagious. Um, he is lovable. Um, he is caring. He is kind. I cannot think of enough good adjectives to describe him, and he is a prayer partner. This man, you can call him by anything. Mr. Ed, my big toker. <laughs> I'm right down in my book, praying for you. But I'm telling you, he is just one of a kind, and I thank him so much for who he is for this chapter, who he is to me professionally, and the friend um, and Christian partner that he's become. I am not going to cry because, you know, they're just certain people. <laughs> Rock it up. Cheers. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, Mr. Ian, I know. <laughs> um, thank you for coming, and I can't even do your introduction. You got a degree, don't you? <laughs> having sound. I guess we have sound now. Yeah? Yes. Okay. This first time we've ever done sound. We've done video before, but we haven't done sound. This is going to go to app. <laughs> this going? Lock it in. Okay. Um, don't ever go to dinner with Seth. Oh, God. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you have a chance, go to dinner with Seth. Um, before I physically get started today, I wanted to tell you about the talent development magazine that comes out every month for ATD. And if you're a national member, you get this every month. And in July's <coughs> issue, this is July, it says the golden rule is wrong and the platinum rule is right. Um, and I was thinking to myself, how often does that happen when you have this magazine come out the month before you're going to talk and it says that the golden rule is wrong. I do not believe that the golden rule is wrong. I will explain the difference between the two for you and how you can use it. Um, does everybody have one of these sheets from Tony Alessandra? Dr. Alessandra and I met uh, 20 years ago in Dallas, Texas at, um, does everybody have a pen? Do you have something to write with? You need a pen? Okay. 
you'll pass that back, please. Anybody else need a pen? Oh, of course, sure. You need a pen? You got a pen, okay. Yeah. Anybody else need a handout? Because this, this is a hands-on thing, and I don't want you to have to draw it. I wanted to make it a somewhat professional. But Tony Alessandra and I met 20 years ago in Dallas, Texas. I had just opened my business, The Coach's Corner, in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I had been a, a marketing professor at Coastal Carolina, and we can give a shout out for them winning the National Baseball Championship uh, this past June. I had nothing to do with that. I was the first strength coach, really. Um, I was the first strength coach at Coastal Carolina back in the 80s. Um, and uh, I won't go into the details of it. I've got a little slide. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my uh, introduction as we go into the uh, presentation. But Tony Alessandro <coughs> had written a book called The Platinum Rule. I had never heard of The Platinum Rule before 20 years ago. And I use it now every day. It's very, very easy to use. It will help you be able to communicate with people at work, people in your family, with friends, people that you don't like you'll be able to communicate with them because you can figure out where they're coming from. And when you figure that out, that makes a huge difference in how you address them. And you come alongside them, and it just changes everything. It's real easy, and you, you can remember this uh, once I show it to you, and it will work for you. I think Betty, I, Betty needs to have one of these sheets. I don't think you have one. <laughs> Okay. All right. Let me get the PowerPoint, and we'll be ready to go. Uh, I need to back it back. Yeah. I wanted to start with the platinum anniversary because um, which is more valuable, gold or platinum, ladies? How much more valuable? Extra ten years of marriage. <laughs> Wow, okay, I wasn't expecting that, but okay, okay. I have to remember that. My wife is here and my youngest daughter is here today. I have three of my former students from Midlands Tech. One is from Ori Georgetown Tech, and he drove all the way here from Myrtle Beach. He got up at 4 o'clock this morning to be here. Um, so, um, platinum is double the price of gold. So if you wanted to get a, a, a gold ring and you wanted it in platinum, you would pay, if it cost $1,000, you'd pay $2,000 for it. So platinum is obviously at a higher uh, level. It's a rarer element compared to gold. But in England, when you have a platinum anniversary, it's for the 70th year. Here, it's the 20th. I don't know why that is, but in England, the 70th year is platinum. So we're celebrating. Um, ATD at this particular chapter started in 1946. So this is just a tribute to all of you that are members now. We would love to double the size of this organization and have to meet every time in the auditorium or have to find us another place. Maybe build a building. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I just wanted to start with that. Now, this is the Platinum Rule. Uh, you can get the book online if you want to read about it. You also can go just to uh, Tony Alessandro's website, and he will uh, share some more detail with you about it, but not that critical. So we're going to start with this. Um, it's not on your sheet, but in the upper left-hand corner, if you'll just write down the word Golden Rule. If you'll just write down Golden Rule in the upper left-hand corner, I need a pen. Come on, Jeff. <laughs> Mr. Trainer? Anybody else need a pen? I'm serious. Do you need a pen? I, I've got lots of... Conway National Bank's been so good for me over the years, and, and I, I still like to promote them even though they're not here. So, um, does anybody know what the golden rule is? Do unto others as you would have it done unto yourself. So, that's what this says. So, if you want to write that down underneath that, fine. If you just want to remember it, that's fine as well. Now we're going to go to the other side, to the platinum rule. Anybody here know the platinum rule? And I'll explain the differences to you. Uh, Juanita, Juanita is one of my students, so I'll, I'll call her. Will you give us the definition of the platinum rule, please, ma'am? The platinum rule states to do unto others as 
they would have you do unto them. Do unto others as have you would do it unto them. And that's what this says. Treat others the way they want to be treated. Now, how many Gamecock fans do I have in here? A lot of Gamecock fans. How many Clemson fans do I have in here? Some Clemson fans, okay? Um, let me explain the difference of the platinum rule and the golden rule this way. If we did the golden rule with you, I also have a degree from Carolina. My wife has a degree from Carolina. But I have a degree from the University of Kentucky. Um, and if I treated you the way I wanted to be treated, I would get you a University of Kentucky hat. And I would expect you as a Gamecock fan to wear it. That doesn't work too well. Same way for Carolina, uh, for Clemson. Uh, my son graduated from Clemson. Uh, and we're big Clemson fans as well, so we would do the same thing. But if I applied the platinum rule, even though I'm a Kentucky graduate and South Carolina's in the SEC, I would get you something from Carolina that you can't have access to. I would call Coach Tanner up and I'd say, what, what are the coaches getting? Is there a pin? Is there a special uh, something that, that I can get that's not available to the general public, and I would get that for you. So the platinum rule is do unto others as they would have it done unto themselves. To do that, you have to know the person. You cannot just assume that they're going to be the way you want them to be. And that's where we make a huge mistake in our lives, is we think everybody is like us. And when they're not like us, we get kind of angry, like, what's wrong with that person? And there's nothing wrong with them. They're fine. But you need to understand where they're coming from, and that's what we're going to do next here. So um, over on the left-hand side, on the X um, coordinates, uh, OK, here it is. Right here, write the word indirect. And then on the Y, still on the X, all right, I don't want to lose this. So then on the right-hand side of the x-axis, I'd like for you to write direct. Now, we're not going to collect these. These are just for you. Um, nobody else is going to see if you want to, you know how you put your hand over your paper and nobody can see what you're doing. That's fine. You can do that. Um, I would like for you to think about yourself in this room in a professional setting, either at work or here in this room, and ask yourself, am I an indirect or a direct person. An indirect person doesn't tell somebody right out, boy, you're, you're too tall, or you're what, you know, you just, you just blurt it out there. That's a direct person. An indirect person kind of hints around at it, might send you an anonymous note or, you know, something, um, or maybe say nothing at all to themselves or to you, but just keep it to themselves. So A, B, C, or D. Put a little dot where you are on the x-axis, A, B, C, or D, please. Now we're going to go to the y-axis. At the top is open. You see, I could have printed all this stuff out, but I want you to be engaged. I want you to be involved. I don't want you to just sit here. OK, at the bottom, we have the word closed. Now, Tony uses the word guarded. I like polar opposites. Like you have indirect and direct, you have open, and guarded is not me. So I've converted it to myself, and so it's open and closed. It's very bipolar. So ask yourself now, if people were to describe you as an open person, that you let everything hang out, or that you're very close, you play your cards close to the vest. Like if you watch, the, I don't ever watch those poker games on TV, but those people that, that, you know, they have the sunglasses on, they have cards up, they don't even know what they're playing. <laughs> you know, they, they have them so close to their chest. So ask yourself between four and one, where are you? Where are you between four and one? And then where the A, B, C, D, 
intersects with the one, two, three, four, you'll be in one of the four quadrants here. I'm not going to tell you what the quadrant is just yet, but this is what you need to know about yourself. And this is what I want you to think about as we go through the rest of this this morning is this. When you meet somebody, think right away when you're shaking your hand, is this a direct person or an indirect person? Right away. Just, you can do this with your family. You don't even have to have the sheet of paper there. It's just in your head. <laughs> Indirect or direct. Real simple. Either on the left side or the right side. Make a judgment. Can you make a wrong judgment? Yes. You can be uh, a particular person socially and a different person business-wise. Or with a coworker, Or somebody that's your boss. Or when you're the boss over them. So it isn't a uh, static, it's a dynamic change, but you need to be aware of that when you're going through uh, the process. So indirect or direct, and then is the person open or closed that I'm dealing with now? And once you size that up, they'll be in one of these four quadrants. So let me give you the four quadrants. The first one is a socializer. A socializer. This person is the person that you would love to help you have a party. Why? Oh. Why? Oh, they're going to be the life of the party. They're going to help you plan it. All. Yeah, they will be the life of the party. When they come to the party, they know everybody at the party. Maybe just this much about each person, but they know everybody there and who to invite and the kind of food to have and the kind of music to have and all the. That's what a social person does. That's what they love. They love applause. They love to be cheered on that they did a great job, that kind of thing. Okay. Then the next one is a relator. This is a person that shows up at the same party, but they look for who? Someone they know. One person. Now, what if they don't know anybody at the party? They make a friend. And they decide in their head right away, is this person a relator or not? And here's what a relator is. A relator is a very loyal person. When they go to a party, they will match up with one person. As long as that person's at the party, they will stay at the party. That person leaves, they're going. And they know this much about that person by the end of the evening. And nobody else knows that much about because a relator is a very good listener. That's what they love to do. They love to listen and empathize with you wherever you happen to be. Next, we have the thinker. The thinker is a perfectionist. I think I struck some chords in here. The thinker is a perfectionist. They want as much information as they possibly can get before they have to make a decision because they always want the decision to be 100% right. And when they're wrong, they are really, really upset. So if the thinker was invited by the social person to come to the social person's party, what might the thinker say to the social person on being invited to the party? I have to think about it. Now, <laughs> when you have to think about it, right away, they are giving you the tip off. You never ask this person more than one question at a time. Why? I'm sorry? It's an overload. Because when you've gone to the second question, they're still on the first. They don't even hear you. They have to resolve the first question first. So the thinker and the socializer are bipolar opposites. The socializer has great difficulty getting in touch and in tune with the thinker because the thinker talks like this. And when you ask them a question, they are processing it. Please don't ask them another question. I don't care what it is. If you ask somebody what time it is and then ask if they're going to go to lunch, that doesn't work. You've got to ask them the time, stop, let them tell you, then say, do you want to go to lunch? You can't do both of them at the same time because they get overload. So a thinker has to think about things, and they don't understand why the social person is on them all the time about coming to the party. I mean, what is there to think about? It's the party. Come on, Jeffrey, it's the thing to do. So then finally we have the last one, the director. 
the director is obviously very direct. The director likes to control situations. The director is a very poor listener. The director hears things. It goes in one ear and out the other. Did you hear what I said? Yes. <laughs> Did you understand what I said? No. <laughs> now, the bipolar of the director is a relator. Directors don't understand how relators can be so loyal. Because the director is always changing directions. They're always, they're very goal oriented. And they're about the goal, they're not about people. So the people on this side talk very fast, people on the left side talk slower. There's nothing wrong with talking slow, but you need to come alongside. If, if you're a director and you're talking to the thinkers, you need to slow down. You need to ask them one question. Now, I've been doing this for 20 years. It's really helped my marriage. It's helped my, Kelly can attest to that, my daughter. Um, my relationship with other people, I'm still under construction. I'm not perfect. So, a year ago, the Lord put on my heart to do this. He said, you come up with four creatures that makes it so much easier for you to relate to the people than these four words. So, a socializer is a hummingbird. A hummingbird is very colorful. Did you know that hummingbirds not only can fly backwards, but they can fly upside down? That's a, that's a social person for sure. <laughs> so when you're thinking about somebody that's direct and very open, they tell you what they had for breakfast, they tell you what they're going to have for dinner tomorrow, I mean, they, they just let it all hang out there. That's a social person, okay? The next one is a Clydesdale. Now, if you're into Budweiser, you know about the Clydesdale uh, horses. But when I was doing the research on this, there's a place in Scotland called Clydesdale, Scotland. And this is where 300 years ago, these horses were originally drafted as, or bred as draft horses. Now, if you go to the Budweiser site, I don't drink beer anymore, but if you go to the Budweiser site, you will see, if you look under the horses, they have 200 of these Budweiser horses. They only use 10 at a time, eight to pull the, the wagon, and two in reserve, and they travel all over the country. They have three or four different crews that travel all over the country from St. Louis, Missouri. They originally started with six in 1933 to celebrate the end of Prohibition. The son of Anheuser-Busch gave these to his, his father. And in 1950, they decided to add a Dalmatian dog to it, you know, on the, uh, on the driver's seat. So these are 18 high horses, 2,000 pounds each. And they have to have a certain coloring in order to be able to qualify to be a Clydesdale that pulls the, uh, the wagon. So a Clydesdale is a great worker. In fact, they love to work. When they're not working, they're bored. And you put a new Clydesdale with a veteran Clydesdale, and the new Clydesdale learns from the veteran because they're harnessed together. That's what happens to a relator. Relators do not like a lot of change. Clydesdales don't, they don't want to change their diet. They're not interested in that. They don't care about changing from oats to barley or whatever it happens to be. They, that's what they do. Every day they expect those oats. So when you're dealing with somebody that is a Clydesdale and you're anything other than a Clydesdale, you have to come alongside them and become, for the moment that you're talking to that person, a Clydesdale. You have to slow down. You have to become a relator. Now, you can go back and be who you are at the end of the conversation, whatever it is that you are. But this will so open the doors up for you with people that you haven't been able to communicate with forever. Could be a family member, could be an ex-friend, whatever. But this allows you to be able to do this. And I, I just salute you for coming here today. The thinker is an owl. Isn't that perfect? An owl as a thinker. Woo! Wow, that's great. Now, did you know that owls have stealth feathers? What? The B117? No. Or F117? What is what are stealth feathers? When a when a owl flies at night, you never hear them coming. Boom. 
and they got you. So when you think of an owl, you think of the wise old owl from way back, the Disney days. Uh, maybe when you were growing up, you had uh, little, little uh, reading books that had an owl in there. So you think about that. Think about a person that has to be right. They want to get as much information as they possibly can before they have to make a decision. More often than not, they might not say to you, but they're thinking to themselves, I'm going to get back to you on that. They might say, you can tell them, you know, I want this by tomorrow. And they're saying, mm, OK, I'll have to get back to you about it. If they're saying that in their head, uh, and they come back tomorrow morning and say, you know, I need a little more time. They could have told you that yesterday. You need to ask them, instead of them t you telling them, I have to have this tomorrow, you ask them the one question, when can I have this? Because as a director, you're forcing it down somebody's throat, and it doesn't go well with the thinker. The thinker's just shut down because they know that you've got four other projects that you ask them to do by tomorrow, and your time is gone. You're not like Clay. You don't work for free. <laughs> and, and now Clay's not working. He's cut on. He, he, it's good to be a member of ATV in the end of Clay. It's good to be a member. OK, and then finally, the lion. The lion. The director is a lion. Directors are pretty lonely. Lions are lonely. In the big cat field, Lion, male lion's the only one that has the mane. No other, no other uh, big cat has the mane. And they direct. They, they don't go, usually go on the hunt. They let the, the females, they let the young cubs go on, on the hunt. The lion gets the proceeds of all the, all the hunting that goes on. So let me ask you when you, and we're going to go through this again um, as we process it through, but let me ask you this. We have gone just about the right time. Everybody stand up. You can't sit for more than about a half hour. Just stand up. Don't leave. Please don't leave. <laughs> but if you stand up and do what Clay did, just, just try not to hit anybody. I don't want to have any fisticuffs in here today, but just stretch. And when you sit down, you lose about 20% of the oxygen flow to your brain. So that's why when you have a heavy meal after lunch, you're, you're having great difficulty trying to take and keep away, trying to keep awake because the blood has gone to your stomach to help digest that great lunch that you had. And in the process, your head gets a little light. So if you'll have a seat now, it only takes just a few seconds. And I would recommend this to you. If you're in charge of a program and you're going to have at least an hour long meeting, don't do an hour-long meeting without having a little stretch where everybody gets to stand up. We didn't lose any time. We didn't lose anything in doing this. In fact, I got you more excited about the class because you got to stand up. A lot of people think, boy, how much longer is he going to be? We're going to finish this. But I don't want to finish it. I want for it to be finished with you. So about a half hour in, and uh, Juanita knows that, and um, Lynn knows that, uh, and Daniel knows that, and Kelly knows that, and Zoanne knows that, that when we have meetings, about a half hour in, my little alarm clock goes off, says, okay, stand up. So that's what we do. And, and I would suggest that you do that. Now, let me ask you this question. What have you gotten out of what I've shared so far? All right, let's quit. I'm, I'm going home now. <laughs> no answers. I need one response, yeah. at least one. Please? What about the animals, Mark? Do you think that works? Oh, yeah. And I shared this with uh, Alessandra, and he said, yeah, go ahead and use it. But he's so you know, into his program that he's going to still use the socializer, the director, the thinker, and uh, the relator. I just think it makes it so much easier to have the four characters. <laughs> and you can visualize in your head, you say, oh, hey, she's a hummingbird. <coughs> Or, Jeffrey r reminds me of an owl. I don't know if you're an owl yet or not. I haven't talked to you enough. I have to, I have to really spend time with the person. But just watch a person's behavior. Watch how they talk. Watch what they say. And then watch what they do. And they will give themselves away. And you want to you wanna partner with them where they are, not where you are. Don't, don't have everybody come over here and be a director unless they're already a director. Now, if two directors went to the party that the socializer were having, and both of them recognized that there was no ice, what would happen? I'm sorry? They would go get ice. 
and they would tell, they would tell someone. someone. Both of them would say, you go get the ice. Another guy would say, no, you go get the ice because it's a macho thing. <laughs> and there would be no ice. And the party would be over. But here's what you could do. If you, if you really want to be smart, you could become a relator because a relator does things without being told. And you could be a lion, or you could be an owl, or you could be a social person. And instead of bickering about it, for just a few seconds, you go get the ice. You're not looking for any recognition. You don't really care, but you like the party, and you enjoy the person that you're talking to, and they're about, their drink is empty, and they're about to get some ice. There is no ice. They're about to leave. So just for a few seconds, you go get the ice. Nobody says anything to you, and everything's solved. Or you could have the two directors in a fisticuffs fight, or maybe uh, doing that uh, Greco-Roman uh, thing that they do at the Olympics, you know, where they go head to head and flip people on, and everybody leaves. Because somebody on their app called the police. <laughs> All right, anything else? How about, how about I, I'm sorry, please, I'll come right back. Yes. Uh, I just, I one big thing I'm taking away from it is they're all important roles. Yes, you know, they are. It's, it's part of the ecosystem. It's like God's design. You know, like we all have to have that. I would encourage you, when you start putting a team together, even a small team, if you've got four people on the team, try to include one of each of these types. Because if you have one left out, it will not make as strong a team as if you had one of e at least one of each type there. Three and five. Yeah, balance. You're exactly right, Mike. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I think the other thing that the model sort of highlights as well is that wherever you fall, like wherever you fall on it, there is then the opportunity based on uh, those continuums to make adjustments in your own growth and development. Yes. So you started by yes. making the point that you were under construction, yes. right? And so wherever you fall in that then, uh, because in some ways you describe certain characteristics as shortcomings, yes. right? So for the director, as a poor listener, then that means there is the opportunity then to move Become. somewhere else along that continuum to adjust behavior so that you end up with a different result. Wow. Ooh, let's give her a hand. <laughs> Thank you, Rona. Somebody else had a hand up over here. I said, yes, ma'am. It depends on the people you're hanging out with. It's, it's not common in any particular business to have this. You can have people that are not directors as leaders. They can come as a leader from another, uh, another animal group. Um, more often than not, the directors or the, or the lions tend to be the leaders, but sometimes they're not the best leaders. They're there because of the position, but they're not necessarily the ones that get the things done that need to be done. So that's a very good question. Just do some your own research when, when you're at work, and I'm telling you, it'll pop out. It'll just show up. It'll, it'll be there. You'll see it. Anybody else? That's yes? Um, I'm a little bit bothered by the description of the lion that you gave, uh, perhaps because I thought that in there. <laughs> <laughs> as lonely as opposed to loner. Okay, loner. Loner is better than lo lonely. Yeah, okay, loner. You. They're more. Than... Okay. Does anybody remember uh, Out of Africa with Robert Redford? Okay. And at the end of the movie, you see the, the lion and the lioness on top of his grave, on the top of this big cliff, and you see the train going down maybe 10 miles away. Um, I got tears in my eyes when I saw that, and I took um, our children because Joanne was on a trip. And I said, we've got to get Zoan to see this movie. And that's what I think about being loner. And I, I misspoke, lonely. Thank you. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, I get overexcited about stuff. And <laughs> I'm not really good at pronouncing things. And sometimes somebody says, what did he say? <laughs> and I meant to say something else. But th this is a basis for you to be able to use the platinum rule. Now, again, the golden rule is what? And what does that mean in relationship to this? A relator treats the other person as a relator. Yes. A relator treats the other person as a relator. And when they don't relate, 
They don't understand why they're not like them. And everybody's not going to be like you. In fact, nobody's like you. Your fingerprint is unique. There's nobody in the world that's ever been this way. Nobody in the world will ever be this way. This is you. That's why you have unique. And this is a great organization, the Association for Talent Development. Wow, what a perfect fit. Because everybody in here is unique. Everybody brings something different to the table. And that's what's so great about this particular organization. All right, let's move on. Now, you can get uh, a program that does a 360 degree, but I just wanted to show you that you could do that online. Now we're going to change gears a little bit. So I'm emphasizing changing gears. And we're going to do. <laughs> How, uh, Kelly has really helped me a lot with putting this PowerPoint together. I, have, I do storyboards when I'm doing a PowerPoint, uh, and I can move them around, but she's the one that, that really helped me out a lot with this. How many people remember the 1987 uh, record from Guns N' Roses, Welcome to the Jungle? Yeah, yeah people, are, people are doing that. Okay. Um, I used to coach high school football at uh, Carolina Forest High School in Myrtle Beach, and Prior to the beginning of the game, we were doing our warm-ups. Uh, somebody thought it would be good to play Guns N' Roses before the warm-up. So every time I hear that, I think about that football field. Um, so we have special creatures in our jungle. That's why I wore this attire. Normally, I'm, I'm dressed in a coat and tie, and you're thinking, what's this guy with a hat? What's, what's the deal here? <laughs> Um, so we have four, at least four special types of creatures in our jungle. And I want you to keep that in mind as we go through the rest of this presentation. And we're doing well on time. My father was a career army officer. He was wounded in the Battle of the Bulge. He went to Vietnam. He went to Korea. This was taken right after my freshman year in college in Munich, Germany. Um, my dad um, was a great man. My mother was a great woman. And the three brothers behind you, the one on the left is Jeff, the one in the middle is Frank. Both of those were born in Puerto Rico. We lived all over the world, so we didn't stay in one place for very long. Um, and they both went on to graduate from West Point. My youngest brother on the right is Jim. Uh, he played at Spring Valley High School at the first state championship uh, football team that they had under Joe Turbeville. I'm so sorry that Joe died earlier this year. Uh, really a great man. And he went on and had an ROTC scholarship to Clemson. He also got an appointment to West Point, but he got the appointment to ROTC at Clemson first. He said, well, I'm going to go there. So he, he, that's what he wound up doing. Um, Bobby Richardson today will be 81 years old. And 30 years ago, I was the strength coach in the afternoon. The morning I taught marketing, the afternoon I was a strength coach when Bobby was the athletic coach. I had hair, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so I'm partial, and it, back in the day it was USC Coastal. It didn't change to Coastal Carolina University until 1992. Um, so it was still part of the USC system. And if you're interested, Bobby has written a really great book called Impact Player. He played for the New York Yankees for many, many years, was an all-star Hall of Fame performer. He played with Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris and those kinds of people. He actually lives in Sumter. Uh, he went right from high school. Uh, to the New York Yankees. He didn't play college ball at all. Okay, now I'm going to share you about my son. Uh, Zach's not here today, but at age four, uh, Kelly's two older sisters were on the swim team at Conway High School, and we went to a state meet up at Clemson University. And anybody here ever been to a swim meet before? Okay. Uh, they're really exciting, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I must tell you, yes, ma'am. There's a T-shirt that says, if I had one day left on the planet, I'd spend it at a swim meet because it would last forever. <laughs> oh, oh, let's give her a nice hand for that. <laughs> swim meets, when you go to them, you watch your son or daughter swim for about 30 seconds, maybe a minute or a little bit longer. And then it's three or four hours before they have the next heat. So Zach was with us. And we were sitting at the Nanatorium at Clemson, and it was hot. And he said, Dad, let's go do something. So I told him we'd go across the street. So we went over to Death Valley, and the gate was open, and we walked around. And he saw the big tiger paws all over the stadium steps. And he said, Dad, where's the tiger? 
<laughs> now, the only place that I know that has a tiger is LSU. They have their own Bengal tiger just on the outside of the stadium um, in a big enclosure. It's not a look like a little cage, but um, that's the only place that I know that has a Bengal tiger. And so we spent the rest of the afternoon looking for the tiger. Obviously, we didn't find him. But as we were walking off, Zach said, Dad, I want to come here and play football. And he kept that dream for 14 years. That's why I wanted to share that with you. Now, I have to share this. Kelly didn't know that I put this in here, I don't think. Did you, Kelly? <laughs> this is Kelly and Zach in 1994. They were uh, playing uh, t-ball for Anchor Bank. Kelly never made it to first base. You see, unlike me, she had hair even back then, and she didn't want a ring around her head from her hat. But you had to have your hat on when you ran. And so if you look, at, she just kind of has it sitting there. <laughs> she's, she's a pretty good runner. And it, she would run to first base, and the hat would fall off. She'd run back to put it back on. But the time she got to first base, she, she was out. She never made it to first base. But, <laughs> She was such a good softball player, she made the varsity softball team at Carolina Force in the seventh grade. So uh, don't give up on, on, your, on your children. And I, I'll just tell you with the two that are here, um, Kelly strikes me as being a, a hummingbird, and Zach strikes me as being um, a uh, Clydesdale because he's a great worker. Now, this is us b back in 2004. Uh, Kelly is um, on the outside. Next to her is our oldest daughter, um, Carrie, and then our son, Zach, and then Zoanne and myself, and Jenny is our middle daughter. So I could go through and give you descriptions, but I'm not going to do that, give you descriptions of, of each of the type as far as uh, each of the four characters. But you can do this on your own. It, it doesn't take a lot of work. It's real easy to do. Just remember, hummingbird, Clydesdale, owl, lion. And it fits. It works. And if you're wrong, you can ask the person that takes the test, and they'll, they'll tell you you're wrong. And they'll tell you you're wrong because of the setting that they're in. They see things from a different perspective than you do. And when they tell you that what you've said to them is right, then you'll be able to communicate even better than you've ever communicated with them before. And that's what I wanted to share with you about this. So we're, we're doing really well for time. Now, in the fall of 2005, Zach was a redshirt walk-on freshman. They had 100 freshmen try out for the football team. They only had five make it. He was one of the five. And he made all, all ACC academic team, but he was redshirted, which means that he didn't get to play. But he got to run down the hill. <laughs> he got a really nice big bag, a leather bag, uh, from the Champs Bowl because he was on the team and he played in the spring game, but he was number six quarterback. They only have three teams deep on the team on offense and Charlie Whitehurst was the uh, quarterback at the time, so Zach knew he wasn't going to get any playing time that year and we had a long discussion at Clemson about what he was going to do and he decided that he would walk away from football because his, his skill set was not high enough to be able to start at Clemson. He could have played somewhere else. In fact, he had some other people interested in him at smaller colleges, but he wanted to graduate from Clemson. And that's what he did in 2009. He graduated from Clemson. He also, when he was in the ninth grade, wanted to go to Australia. He became an exchange student in um, north of Sydney, Australia at University of Newcastle. And Kelly and I went over, we flew over, you don't want to do that. It's five hours across America, then it's another 14 hours on the flight, and you can't leave the airport in Los Angeles till they are guaranteed that you will not be there before 6 o'clock in the morning, because if you fly into Sydney before 6 o'clock in the morning, the airport's not open. There's nobody there. So they have to calculate with the wind coming from the west and you going into the headwind how long it's going to take you to get there before you can take off from LA, but it's, it's a great place to visit if you, if you want to see something pretty exotic. So this is us in 2002. We have, there we have five grandchildren. Um, we have added another one. Uh, uh, Ellie is now two. So we have six grandchildren. So we have 15 people, I think, in our family. And I can give you the names of everyone. I, will, I asked Kelly to come up with a safari team bus. So this is a generic one because 
I want to talk with you about another book. Um, if you don't know where you're going, you'll probably end up somewhere else. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? If you don't know where you're going, you'll probably end up somewhere else. Good. Hello. <laughs> yes. Wait. Yeah, you have no direction. You just, you know, somebody could say to you, hey, show up. For, show up for our next ATD meeting. They don't tell you the time. They don't tell you it's going to be here. Actually, the next one in September is not going to be here. It's going to be at the SCANA headquarters for the leadership conference. So don't show up here in <laughs> September because you'll be here by yourself unless you want to go to class. I mean, you could do that. Okay, now, I, I used to read about 100 books a year, but I'm not teaching anymore. And um, so I'm, I'm not as diligent. That's two books a week. Um, I like to read nonfiction. Zoanne's very different from me. She likes to read all fiction. I think the last fiction book that I finished uh, was The Jungle by Sinclair Lewis, because my father used to uh, live in Chicago, and he suggested that book to me. How many people here are familiar with the energy bus? Anybody? OK, what is the energy bus about? Yes, so you can tie the energy bus in with a platinum rule, yes? How, how could you do that? How could you tie the energy bus concept, which we're going to go through here briefly. I'm doing really good on time. We're going to do that briefly to tie the two concepts together, the platinum rule and the energy bus. All right, I'll ask you that question again when we finish this part. Ten rules for the jungle team ride of your life. Now, I have altered the ten... Um, rules a little bit from the, uh, John Gordon's um, actual ones. The driver of the jungle safari bus is key. Why would the driver be key on the jungle bus? The only one that knows where he's going. The only one that knows where he or she is going. And you need to let other people on the bus know where you're going. Lots of times they just put you on the bus and you're just part of the team, but you don't know where you're going. It's not very healthy. Okay, number two. Vision and values move your bus in the right direction. What does that mean? That's a road map to where you're going, your vision and values. How many times have you, have you um, asked 100 people in your corporation, what is the vision of our company? And you'll get 100 different answers. When you think about the Olympics, like basketball, for example, do they play with 10 basketballs on the court? How many basketballs do they play with? Five, yeah? They play with one for both teams. And they have a very definite goal, and it changes every quarter. But everybody on the team, whether they're a starter or a reserve, knows what the goal is. And if you can get your people to buy into whatever the vision happens to be, and it needs to be short. I mean, the vision for me for the coach's corner is building leaders and achieving goals. That's what we do. That's all I focus on. I don't focus on anything else. So you have to have a set of, uh, you have to have a vision, and then you have to have a set of values, and we're not going to get into that here, but wh what are the key values of the company? Jungle Jungle Ride with positive, positive energy encouragers. What, what are those people? Please? Your support system. Your support group. Number four, invite people on your bus and share your vision for the road ahead. Pretty self-explanatory. And number five is don't waste your energy on the, those who don't want to be on your bus. What does that mean? Yes. I'm going to drop you off at the next corner. The next corner. We're going to let you out. We have a nice air-conditioned bus. We're going in this direction. I think you're going in that direction. You have to be bold enough as a leader to be able to do that. Now, sometimes, depending on the organization, it's very difficult to get somebody off the bus. Uh, I've worked for organizations before where they put all the bad people in one department. <laughs> oh, man. That was so hard to work with those people because none of them were going anywhere. And they loved it. They got paid for doing essentially nothing. Um, so the idea would be that you could open the door and 
nicely. Don't kick them off the bus. Just nicely let them off the bus. All right, number six. Post a sign that says, no energy vampires allowed. What is that? They suck it out of you. Now, we all know people that that, that can be related to. George Costanza. <laughs> to me, that's the most visual image I could give you of an energy vampire. If I had to work with him on that set, I probably would pass. I know that was an acting job of his, and he did such a great job of it, but he took nothing and made it worse. <laughs> so hypochondriac, so, wow. Uh, there was a guy named Pigpen in uh, Peanuts, okay? And, and, and there was also a guy in Little Abner that had a cloud over him all the time. Um, those are the people that you want to run from. Sometimes you can't, sometimes they're your boss. And if you can possibly, try not to be, have them on your bus. Okay, number seven, enthusiasm attracts more team members and energizes the ride. Are you about ready for this to be over? Stand <laughs> up. We don't have to stand up. But Energized people energize you. People are talking, let's look at the slide number eight today, okay? And what they do is they stand up here and they read it like this, you know, each one of the letters. The PowerPoint should be a way of enhancing your presentation, not being a crutch. Number eight, love your jungle safari team members. Why did it not say like? Why did it not say like? Like doesn't show passion. Like does not show passion. And it, it's, really, it's easy to love people that are like you. If you're, if you're a Clydesdale, it's easy for you to love other Clydesdales. But if you're a Clydesdale and you've got a lion on your team and they're not going to change, you need to come alongside and be a lion too from the time that you're talking with them or communicating with them in some way. But you want to do it enthusiastically. Um, I always, when I was hiring people, always tried to hire enthusiastic people. You can train most people to do things. You can train most people. But you can't train enthusiasm. So if there's a choice between somebody that's got a lot of IT, but they're just as dull as this table, I would hire the person that doesn't have all the IT stuff because I can teach it to them or I can get somebody to teach it to them, but I can't teach you enthusiasm. I can't. Okay, number nine, drive with a purpose and a passion. It goes back to the vision and the value. Every day, you need to be excited about going to work. Clay is so excited, he worked on his birthday. Even though he, he's given his birthday off by the boss. Let's give, let's give Mike a nice hand for that. <laughs> All right, number 10, have fun and enjoy the adventure. Life, you know, life's really too short to not enjoy what you're doing. Now, I know a lot of people are, are looking for retirement and you know, when that comes up. Uh, <laughs> but still be enthusiastic about that. Okay, here we go. Wrong people on a safari bus. This is where the Indian vampires live. <laughs> I, I thought of having a little cartoon, Energy Vampire, but I, I didn't want to slight anybody, so I decided to not do that particular slide. Now, right team on the right safari bus, and this is an energy encourager. <laughs> Such enthusiasm. Now, obviously, they love each other because they're both chimpanzees. At the same time, you need to be able to embrace other people that have other values than you. Because if you just kind of tolerate somebody, they know it and you know it. And it does not make for a cohesive team. Right team members in the right team seats. Now, when we lived in Taiwan, my youngest brother was born in Taiwan, by the way. I had wanted a monkey since I was about four years old. And my dad, if you look very closely right here, that's a monkey laying in my lap. His name is Pee Wee, one of my great companions in life. Now, 
Kelly put all this together. This is enjoy the ride. This is really you're, you're enjoying the ride. Okay. I want to give you one more book that uh, recently came out. If you know anything about Nike, you know that Philip Knight was the runner for Bill Bowerman. Bill Bowerman was the coach at Oregon back in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. And between Bill Bowerman and Philip Knight, they created Nike. This is one of the best books. Even if you don't like Nike, it's a great book about struggling, about getting started. They used to shell, sell their shoes out of the trunk of their car at track meets. This is a really, really good book. If you like sports, if you like entrepreneurship, this would be a great book for you. Uh, my oldest daughter, Carrie, for um, Father's Day gave me this card. It says, Dad, do not um, try to have a happy Father's Day. Because Yoda says, do or do not, there is no try. I love that. I love that. Because if you think about it, uh, I think Mike said, you're trying, you were saying something about you try to do something. Yeah. <laughs> I say that too. Because of this, I'm working really, really hard. I say, I'm working on it. It's not the same thing as trying. Because if you try, you know, I tried to get to work on time. I tried to get the project done. I tried to get dinner ready. I, you just keep trying and you keep failing. Yes, ma'am. Oh, sorry, I just have to share this real quick. This is a great Star Wars card, by the way. Can we use this in our house all the time? Okay. Do not, there is no try in our house all the time. We have one daughter, she's eight, and she started guitar lessons over the summer, and she walked in. He's a rock star. Her instructor is a, like a real live rock star. I have a little crush on him. <laughs> <laughs> And I, and I hear him say to her, she says, well, I tried. And he says to her, do or do not. There is no try. And I was like, and now I love him. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a kind of family motto for yes. us. Because you have to tell her it's that persistence, you know, and how do you build gumption and all of that. So I think this is fantastic because that's a model you're adopting. This is such a great cop-out. When you, you say, well, I tried. I'm off the hook. You don't have to worry about it anymore. I'm off the hook. I tried. No, don't try. Do or don't. If you do and fail, that's okay. If you don't, that's okay. But don't, don't play the, you know, I'm right on the border here. I'm, I'm trying. Try it. That's a bad word when you're in business for people that want to try to do something. So when you hear it, think, say, hey, are you a Star Wars fan? Yeah. Okay, what does Yoda say? What does he say? There is no try. You either do or you don't. And you get them, you got them caught then. And they, they have to think about that. Okay. Life is all about trade-offs. Kelly, what does this mean? <laughs> My children hated me saying this when we were growing up with them. If you're here, where can you not be? There. Wherever there happens to be. Life is all about trade-offs. If you do this, you can't do that. If you try, you won't succeed. You have to make it happen. Um, I just want to leave this up here. Ooh, we got one minute. One minute. Questions, comments, the more the merrier. Wow, that's not good. Yes, ma'am. Uh, are you and your spouse um, in the Opposite quadrants of the. Yes, we are. Uh, Zoanne is, is a uh, Clydesdale, 100% Clydesdale, and she is a great worker. We, we've been married 45 years. We've known each other for um, 46, no, 56 years now. We met in high school, but I foolishly didn't get married until we were in our 20s. And uh, what a great partner. But yeah, we're opposites. And I've, I've learned over the years that I need to come alongside her instead of do it this way. <laughs> because I get hurt when I do that. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you for asking. Other questions? OK, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. I guess more of a um, comment. Um, as you went through that, I see someone on our team who is truly the owl. 
Okay. And brings a lot of um, good. He he holds the team together in a lot of ways, but he's not appreciated by the manager and. Some of us see that if, if he were to leave, we would be in hot water, but I don't think the, the man would see that. Um, how if how you, can if, we kind if, of work? Number one, I suggest you read the Platinum Rule yeah, of the I'm book. Yeah, I was going to, yeah. Uh, number two, uh, you might want to share this with your team at some point in time. And, and I'm working with a company that does that on a regular basis, and it has opened up so many new avenues for the people, they said, and we were the little uh, tiara on top, and it has the owl, or it has the lion, or whatever. <laughs> That's why you're that way, people say. And it's changed the atmosphere entirely in the organization. So that, that would be my second recommendation to you. Thank you for asking that. Any other questions? I want to tell you how much I have enjoyed being with you today. This has been a great, humbling experience for me. Hope you have a great balance of the year and a wonderful Friday. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, I want to thank Mr. Ed again for his presentation today about treating others the way um, they want to be treated. And I can say as a testament, Mr. Ed, he's like that. He's always been like that. And, um, you know, I just hope that you know, I can, you know, follow in his footsteps and hope that I treat people the way they want to be treated. And hopefully we can take these back to our organizations and um, do well yes. when we're working with each other and value each other on a daily basis. Well, Mr. Ed, you know, we love you. I know you told me, don't give me that because we have that on the part of the board. But we just want to say thank you. thank you so much. Mr. Ed is a fellow breast cancer. I'm not breast cancer. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's the first time that's ever happened to me. <laughs> Mr. Ed is a fellow cancer survivor, and um, we're just so proud of him and what he does um, personally and professionally for the chapter. So thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome.